In 1991, Konami released a sequel to their much-loved arcade classic, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. This new entry was subtitled Turtles in Time, and took everything you loved about that first game and made it bigger and better. It also retained the four-player cooperative gameplay. It was a smash hit and a home version was pretty much guaranteed. That happened the following year on the Super Nintendo. Konami chose to add a 4 to the title to keep it in line with the three previous NES games, and made numerous changes to the design. It took some liberties with the stages, enemies, and boss encounters, but it otherwise was a great version overall. When Konami finally came on board and started making games for the Sega Genesis, one of their first projects was a new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle game. Using Turtles in Time as their inspiration, they chose not to do a direct port and instead created a new story, new stage layouts, and even changed the feel of the gameplay a bit. It was released in late 1992 as the Hyperstone Heist, and in this episode, we're gonna see if it lived up to its epic source material. Originally released around Christmas of 1992, the Hyperstone Heist was a good old-fashioned beat-em-up. It gave a choice to play as any of the four mutated martial arts experts, each with their own unique weapon. There was Michelangelo and his nunchaku, Raphael and his Sai, Donatello and the bow staff, and finally the leader of the group, Leonardo, and his dual katana. The main body of gameplay is directly based on what was in Turtles in Time, with a few differences. First, the ability to run is now assigned a button as opposed to tapping the direction twice. And while you do retain a slam attack, you can no longer throw enemies towards the screen. Luckily, if you find yourself in trouble, you do still have a powerful desperation attack by pushing attack and jump together, but it does take some life away in the process. Outside of that, the feel of the basic mechanics of jumping, movement, and attacks are very similar, though the Genesis game does move and play a bit faster. The bigger difference you'll find between the two games is in the story and the level design. Turtles in Time, as the name clearly suggests, is a story about time travel. Shredder sends the Fab Four through various time warps that sees them fighting in the past and future. The Hyperstone Heist instead has Shredder using a powerful artifact from Dimension X to shrink the island of Manhattan, and it's up to the Turtles to stop him. From there you get some major differences in levels and boss encounters. Turtles in Time has more stages, but they are shorter, while Hyperstone Heist uses a boss rush on the fourth stage to make up for the limited number of bosses you face. You will notice that Hyperstone Heist uses a number of things from the very first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles arcade game. Some stages have extremely similar designs to it, and the Baxter Stockman you face is based on his pre-fly transformation. You also get the same co-op two-player action that was available in the Super Nintendo rendition. Turtles in Time was a great looking arcade game and the Super Nintendo version continued that. Thankfully, Konami did the Genesis proud as well, with some fantastic color, detail, and animation. Sewers are dark and dank, city streets are gloriously detailed, with little touches like garbage bins, fire hydrants, and graffiti. And once the turtles visit other areas like a ghost ship and the Technodrome, they are suitably creepy and alien. Backgrounds offer up loads of details as a single layer, or give you some parallax scrolling for a bit more depth. Both look outstanding. Standard enemy foot soldiers are mainly palette swaps of one another, but many of them do have unique attack animations, and some of them can even block. The boss guys are typically large and well detailed, and you'll rarely feel any slowdown or see any glaring sprite flicker. It's a good looking game for the most part, and a credit to Konami for keeping it so close to the inspiration, despite the color differences in the hardware involved. Finally, the cutscenes look great as well. From the opening with April O'Neil to the attack on the Technodrome, it all looks exactly as it should and very comparable to the original arcade's assets. 
I do admit it would have been nice to get a few extra software scaling effects for those throws, and I would have liked some more boss fights instead of the gauntlet that just rehashes the previous sprites. But outside of that, Hyperstone Heist is a graphical winner in nearly every respect. When comparing sound in a Sega Genesis game to similar arcade and Super Nintendo titles, the end result is often not in Sega's favor. A lot of developers just didn't have a flair for the FM synth the Genesis relied on, but I think Konami did an excellent job here. They didn't come in and completely redo the soundtrack with completely new songs. They actually made what already existed sound great on the Genesis hardware. And sound great it does. They really nailed the overall feel of these tunes and the Genesis almost seems in its element here, like it was meant to pump out these ballads effortlessly. People will always have their favorites and prefer one over another, but I think you'll all agree that Sega's hardware definitely held its own. Despite what may seem like a glowing review so far, Hyperstone Heist is not without its problems. The aforementioned lack of boss encounters is an issue that is compounded by the fact you have to battle them again as some sort of compromise. You have Leatherhead, Rocksteady, Tatsu, and Baxter Stockman, so not counting Krang or Shredder, that is a mere four big fights in the entire game. It's a weak showing considering the Super Nintendo port received the likes of Bebop, the Rat King and Slash, in addition to what you already had here. I was also somewhat disappointed that Konami didn't go all out with loads of effects like parallax scrolling and huge multi-jointed sprites, similar to what we saw in their Rocket Knight adventures. Because some of the cooler effects like sprite scaling enemies were removed, I was hoping for some compromise with things that Genesis could do quite well in return. Finally, the voices here aren't the best. They have that low quality scratchiness to them that many games had then. It doesn't ruin anything, but it does present a slight marring on the otherwise killer audio presentation. Despite these mild complaints, I overall find myself absolutely loving this version of the game. The gameplay, sound, and graphics are all representative of the IP on which it's based, and the Genesis doesn't struggle at all bringing it to you. Each attack lands with a satisfying thud, each level colorful and impressively detailed, and it's all wrapped up in a soundtrack that easily gives the arcade and Super Nintendo version a run for their money. If you play Turtles in Time first, this likely won't change your mind as far as which one you prefer, but if you were a Genesis fan back in the day, this was every bit as fun and playable as those versions. I'd also like to take a moment and comment on the regional variations of this game. It actually had three different names for every major region it was released in. In Japan, it was known as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Return of the Shredder. It had some killer art on the cover of the box, a battlefield of foot soldiers attacking the fearsome foursome as Shredder looks over them. This version of the game is rare and often sells for $300 plus if it's complete. There was also a Korean release based on the same name and cover art. 
The US version is of course subtitled The Hyperstone Heist. It has very different box art that conveys the story more directly of Shredder Shrinking New York. This one complete is often half the price or less of the Japanese version, and there are many more available. If you don't mind collecting just the cartridge, I've seen this one go as cheap as $45. Be wary though, this is one of the most counterfeited Genesis games I've ever seen, and there are some good ones out there on genuine PCBs pulled from other Sega games. The Brazilian release was based on these North American assets. The PAL release changed a bunch of things. First, it was called Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles There, a simple change, but one I always found interesting. The cover art was also wildly different from the US and Japanese versions, appearing to mimic the bright and colorful 1980s cartoon much closer than the other regions. Finally, if you enter the code CBB, AAABC at the Konami logo in the Japanese and European releases, the two-player mode allows the Turtles to damage one another, something you could not do in the US variant. I can't tell you how many times I've seen this version of the game reviewed and compared negatively to its arcade and Super Nintendo counterparts for its differences. What is seen as a weakness, I actually see as the very reasons you need to play it. Why would I want the same story and levels that already existed? I love the fact that Genesis changed things up a bit and gave me a different experience. In essence, the Genesis game was more of a good thing. Whereas the Super Nintendo release complemented the arcade original, the Genesis Adventure itself complemented them both. I adored this about the 16-bit era specifically. While games could be similar, many times they differed enough that made each version worth investigating. And not just to see some simple difference in resolution, like today, but to see genuinely different content, even if it was only how it was laid out for you to enjoy. With that in mind, Hyperstone Heist is a terrific game that has some excellent cooperative play. You can nitpick its differences, you can prefer one version over another, but I think it's crazy to dismiss this as not worth your time on those bases. More of a good thing is never a bad thing across different platforms, and Konami changed enough here to make the journey worth taking again. We all have our favorites and I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but I choose to celebrate that these different versions exist at all instead of tearing one down to support my own preferences. The Super Nintendo and Genesis Turtle games were both must-play additions to their library and complemented one another perfectly. They both set in my game room as homages to a time when game developers cared enough about their software to make each entry a special experience. I'm Sega Lord X. Thank you guys for watching. And I will catch you next time.